of the other privileges I have is introducing our next speaker. And I want to introduce a person who was a graduate of Lafayette in 1986. He also graduated from Nazareth and Penn State. He has fought in our district at the Anadabi Nation School for 18 years. He is a member of the Hill Clan, represented by the Anadabi Council of Chiefs. He just finished his six years of coach. He's a very good voice of cross culture at Lafayette, but in my mind, he's a better person. Bradley Pauls. Uh 
<laughs> he said, well, truck driver, sounds like you want to go out and see the world. In order to do that, you have to know who you are as an Onondaga first. Because if you know who you are, you can go anywhere. One of my first lessons was of Gaswenta, or the Tura Wakum Belt. For those who are not aware of this, this is a treaty made between the Haudenosaunee and the Dutch in 1613, 399 years ago. We both recognized that our ways were different. We governed differently, we spoke differently, we dressed differently. We had different ways of giving thanks to our Creator. Despite all those differences, we're able to come together in agreement. Although our ways are different, we respect those differences and call each other brother when we meet. Brothers imply that we are of equal standing. Second is that we'll keep our ways and customs in our canoe, while our white brothers' customs and ways will be kept in their ship. Neither one will try to steer the other's vessel as it travels down the river of life side by side. Finally, we agreed that both peoples will make this agreement last as long as the grass grows, the waters run downhill, and the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Although this agreement happened a long time ago, it is just as relevant then as it is today. Our graduating class is going to a world where the distance between countries and customs is shrinking every day. They will not only be encouraged encountering more and more people who are different, but they will be working alongside them as well. As I learned more and more lessons from my mother and father, my path did not lead me to being a journalist or a truck driver, but to a teacher. Everyone has that special elementary teacher and that high school teacher. I was fortunate to be in Mr. Sendek's old class, Mrs. Wangerman's Class, Mr. Friday's math class, Mr. Elgate and Mr. Crow's chemistry and earth science classes, Mrs. Gratis's English class, and of course, Mr. Greeny's SU Project Advanced English class. In Mr. Greeny's class, I remember one assignment in particular, Othello. Now you must remember that I like reading Sports Illustrated, so <laughs> Shakespeare's Othello was a big leap for me. <laughs> I couldn't figure out who was in love with who and why all the people were all of a sudden dying. <laughs> <laughs> this is also the time of writing on typewriters with carbon sheets of paper in between so you could have a copy when you're done and you're finished. By the time I was done, it was a complete mess. But I turned it in anyways. Of course, like when I got my paper back, it was covered in red ink. And Mr. Green said, in the way that he only could, Right, you said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, what happened afterwards that stuck with me. He helped and he talked, and I thought, I want to do that too. So I did. I pursued my dream of teaching and playing lacrosse. I did it at a Catholic college called Nazareth College in Rochester. I was living a dream, playing lacrosse and going to school. But in life, there will be times choices and consequences. Mine happened my senior year at NAS. My choice was to keep playing lacrosse and graduate the following year or stop playing so I could finish my student teaching duties and finish in the spring. It was a really hard choice, but I chose teaching. Because I chose teaching, this led me on another path, coaching. Coach Nelson saw that my choice was extremely difficult for me. He arranged for an interview at a, for me to coach the local high school. The interview went great, and I was hired to coach at a Catholic high school called Quay. It was their first year of lacrosse. It was my first year, first year coaching lacrosse, so it worked out great. The only people who weren't happy were the coaches of the baseball team. <laughs> we lost more games than we won, but we all learned together. We played school with roots across traditions such as around the Boyd, Penfield, Fairport, Rush Henrietta, and we loosely ended up on the wrong end of the state. I mentioned Rush Henrietta because something special happened while I was coaching against them. Unknown to me, 
I caused against my future brother-in-law. Of course, they didn't know it at the time. The laws would have doubled them every time he touched the ball. But while I was trying to beat my brother-in-law's team, my future bride, Joanne, for the last 20 years, was in the stands. And to this day, she, she won't tell me who she was cheering for, me or her brother. But when I tell the story, I would say it's me. <laughs> now, I won't say that all my choices turned out great or even medium. In fact, I have another story to share about Share, but my lawyer reminded me I didn't want to tell it in the state of Texas. <laughs> but I encourage our 2012 graduates to take what you learned in the classroom, on the playing fields, from your parents, your elders, and yes, Frenchie, even your coaches, and make those experiences a part of who you are. Because a great man once told me, if you know who you are, you can go anywhere. Good luck and congratulations to the class.